Hello, boys and girls. Hi, everyone. Say, Aunt Sue, I wonder how many of our story time boys and girls have ever started reading their Bibles through. Well, Uncle Dan, I'm sure those who have are familiar with your next story. That's right, because this is the very first story in the Bible. It's found in the first three chapters of Genesis, and I call it Adam and Eve. This story took place a long, long time ago, at the very beginning of the world. Holy Scripture says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and all that in them is. On the first day of creation, God created light. On the second day, he caused the waters to be separated. Then he created the trees and carpeted the earth with grass and beautiful flowers and all the living green things. Finally, God created the living creatures the fish, birds, and all the animals. Lastly, God created man, whom he named Adam, and placed him in a beautiful garden home called Eden. Hello. Oh, hello. You are Adam. Adam? Yes, Adam, a son of God. Created in his likeness. God? Who is God? He is the creator of the universe. He created everything, even you. Oh, I'd like to see him. Where is he? His abode is in heaven. Heaven? Where is that? Heaven is the center of the universe, the center of all things. God must be wonderful to... To have created all these beautiful things. He is the personification of love and compassion, power, justice, kindness, all that is good. But why did he create me? You are to have dominion over the earth, rule the animals, the birds and fishes, control the elements. You are the prince of this world. I am? Oh, I'd like to see some of the animals, elements, and the earth over which I am to rule. May I? Look around you, Adam. Beautiful. Beautiful. Here is one of the animals God created. Oh, what a pretty little creature. May I pick him up in my arms? You are the prince of this world. You may do as you wish. Come to me, little fellow. Oh, my, but you're soft and warm. And what a fluffy little tail you have. What is his name? He has no name. God wishes you to name the animals. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, I'm going to name this little fellow a uh, rabbit. <laughs> and this, Adam, is the very center of the garden. Magnificent. And what a beautiful pool of water. Crystal clear. From this pool flow the four rivers that water the garden. Oh, and that tree. How grand and majestic. That is the tree of life. Its fruit imparts life. May I eat some of the fruit? You may eat of every fruit in the garden except one. That tree over there. It is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You may not eat of it. It isn't good for food? God forbids you to eat it. If you do, you will die. Oh. Well, God is my creator. I will gladly obey him in all things. I will not eat that fruit. There, Adam. You have seen all the garden. <coughs> Hello there, little fella. You're a friendly little creature. I wish you could talk. In one sense, animals do talk, Adam. They do? If you study them carefully, their habits and ways, you will discover that you can understand them. Hmm. This animal, for instance. See if you can understand him. All right. First, though, I'll name him. Mm, let's see. Uh, dog. Yes, yes, dog. That's just the right name for you. All right now, doggy. Let's talk. Uh, 
How would you like to come along as we look around some more? <laughs> would you like it if we didn't take you along? <laughs> you wouldn't, huh? Well, I can see you're going to be very close to men. Perhaps man's best animal friend. Well, come along then and we'll name the rest of the animals. <laughs> I notice that there are two of each animal. Two of every kind, Adam. Is there a reason for it? Yes, Adam. Hmm. The two are male and female, created thus by God as companions to each other and to replenish the earth. Oh. Well, there aren't two of me. I know, Adam. Why? God hasn't seen fit, Adam, and he knows best. Oh, what do we have here? A, a fluffy, furry little animal. Oh, you like this little animal, do you? Well, very well, then. We'll take him along with us, too. And I'll name him, uh, Cat. Adam was busy and happy there in his garden home with his pets and animals. But God saw that he would be happier still with a human companion. So God caused Adam to sleep. Then he performed an operation, removing one of Adam's ribs. From that rib, God made a woman. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Oh, oh you, you startled me. I didn't mean to. You, you're not one of God's angels? No. Who are you? I am Eve. Eve? I am your companion, Adam. My companion? Where did you come from? Heaven? God created me from one of your ribs. He did? Why, you... you are beautiful. Everything God created is beautiful. The grass, trees, this garden, everything. And I'm sure we'll be happy here, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, Adam. Hmm? This beautiful thing. What is it? That, Eve, is a flower, a rose. Would you like to pick it? May I? Of course. God created all the flowers for us, for our pleasure. Pick all you wish. They'll never wither or die. Wither? Die? What do those words mean, Adam? Well, I don't quite understand myself, Eve. God told me that things would wither and die only if we sinned against God. Sin? And what is that? Sin is merely another word for disobedience to God's wishes, his laws. Why, why would anyone want to disobey God? I'm sure I don't know. God is our creator. He certainly knows what's best for us. Why, to disobey him would be folly. Yes, Eve. There's certainly no question but that we will obey him, is there? We will obey God, always. I... Well, Adam, I... I have a strange feeling in my stomach. You're probably hungry. Hungry? Yes, you need to eat. Oh. I'll pick some fruit for you. Oh, I would like some of that fruit, Adam. No, 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 Eve. Oh, please, Adam. It, it looks so delicious. It probably is, but we can't eat it. Why not? It is the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God has forbidden us to eat of it. Oh, then we'll not eat of it. God knows best, and, well, if he told us not to eat it, we won't. <laughs> you make me very happy, Eve. I'm happy too, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> and so began life for Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. One day, Eve was in the very center of the garden, looking up at the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Oh, what beautiful, delicious looking fruit. I wonder why God forbade us to eat it. Oh, well, God knows best, and if he said Excuse it, but... me, um, did God forbid you to eat this fruit? Yes, I... What? Who's speaking to me? A friend. I don't see anyone. Where are you? Up here, high up in the tree. Why, I still don't see anyone. Don't you see a serpent? Yes, but... <laughs> Serpents can't talk. Ah, but you're mistaken, Eve. I'm a serpent, and I'm talking. Oh, but Eve, tell me, did God really forbid you to eat the fruit of this tree? 
Yes. Oh, why? If, if we eat that fruit, we'll die. God told you that? Yes. <laughs> well, God did tell us that. <laughs> oh, my dearie, you're beautiful, but you're not very wise. Do you want to know the real reason God doesn't want you to eat this fruit? Why, well, he doesn't want us to die. Oh. <laughs> well, then why did God tell us not to wait? Because he doesn't want you to be as wise as he is. Oh, now what's that got to do with it? If you eat this fruit, Eve, you will become as wise as God himself. Oh, I don't believe you. Oh, I speak the truth. I can prove it. Oh. Well, look at me. I'm a serpent. And yet you're amazed that I can talk. Do you know why I can talk? No. Because, Eve, I ate this fruit. You ate this fruit? And if it will do all this for me, Eve, a serpent, why think of what it will do for you, a human being. Well, God said if we even touch the fruit, oh, we'll die. Oh, nonsense, Eve. You won't die. You'll become wise. As wise as God himself. I don't believe you. I speak the truth, Eve. Here. Here, take some of the fruit. See? You're touching it now. And you're not dead. I'm not, am I? Now eat some. Eat just a little bit, and you won't die either. Go on. Eat some. Well, a, a little bite won't hurt, will it? Of course not. <laughs> All right, then. just a tiny bite. That's the spirit, Eve. There. <laughs> That's the way. <laughs> Does it taste good, Eve? <laughs> yes. yes, it tastes very good. See, I told you it would. Now go on. Eat another bite. A bigger one this time. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> now eat all of it. Eat it all. Yes, I will. <laughs> oh, this is good oh, fruit. Oh, and why don't you take some to Adam and get him to eat it too? I will. Yes, I will. We'll both become God. Now, see there, Eve. See how wise you are already. And free, like God himself. Now, on Eve, don't let anyone, not even God, tell you what to do or what not to do. Eat what you want to eat and do what you want to do. You're wise now, and you can rule your own life. Oh, Serpent, <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm going to take some of this fruit to Adam. Good. Oh, but please don't leave. I won't. I want Adam to come back and meet you. Oh, don't worry, Eve. Adam will meet me many a time. <laughs> Oh, yes, Adam. Eve, I, I was wondering where... Why, Eve, what's the matter? You look excited, oh, almost frightened. I am excited, Adam. I just had the most thrilling experience. I, I talked to a serpent. You what? I talked to a serpent, a, a snake. <laughs> a rather one-sided conversation, I'd say. Oh, no, no, the serpent talked, too. The serpent carried on a conversation. Isn't it wonderful, Adam? Eve, what have you done? Tell me exactly what happened. Well, I, I was standing there under the tree of the knowledge of good and evil when all the at once The tree of I... the knowledge of good and evil? Eve, what have you done? Talk to a serpent. He was up in the tree Eve, and I... Eve, he must be the enemy God warned us about. He's our friend, Adam. He said so. Eve, Eve, did you eat the forbidden fruit? Eve. What? Did you eat the forbidden fruit? Yes. Yes, I did. No. No, Eve, you didn't. You, you couldn't. I did. And I'm not dead, either. I'm not going to die. The serpent said I wouldn't. He is the enemy. God warned us about. Oh, nonsense. Here, Adam, I, I brought some of the fruit for you. Eat it, and, and together we'll become gods. No, no, Eve, I can't eat it. We'd die. We'd both die. I've already eaten it, haven't I? And I'm not dead. Oh, please, Adam. No. If you love me... You'll eat it. I do love you, Eve. I love you very much. But I cannot disobey God. You love God more than you do me. Oh, Eve, don't be ridiculous. I ridiculous. do Ridiculous? Lo you don't love me or you wouldn't talk to me like that, Adam. Eve. All right. Give me the fruit. I'll eat it. Together we'll die. Together we'll become gods, Adam. Together we will die. Hmm. 
Oh, it tastes good. It's very good. I, I told you. Maybe you're right. Maybe this fruit will make us like God. Oh, Adam, isn't it wonderful? Oh, yes. Yes, Eve. It, it, it... No. No, it can't be true. Oh, Eve, we have sinned. And God will punish us. Don't be absurd, Eve. Adam. Eve, God's presence has already left us. Feel the air. It's becoming chilly, yes. cold. Oh, Adam. Adam, I... I'm afraid. Look, even the robe of light has left us. Oh, Adam, what do we do? I don't know, Eve. You should have thought about that before you ate the fruit. Are you blaming me for this? I'm blaming no one. It's your fault you let me go near that tree. I let you go? Yes. <laughs> you sneaked away when I wasn't looking. I did not. You did. I did not. You did, and furthermore, if you had any sense, you wouldn't have been fooled by a serpent. So now I don't have any sense. That's right. Don't you dare yell at me, Adam. Who's yelling? You are. I am not. And you're mean to me. I am mean to you. <laughs> I <laughs> wish I were dead. Dead? Well, I... <laughs> Oh, Eve, see what sin has already done to us. We're quarreling and fighting. Yes, you are quarreling, aren't you? It's the serpent, Adam. Yes, it's I, Eve. <laughs> Get out. You have no right in this garden. I have every right, Adam. I'm the prince of this world, and I intend I to... I am the prince of this oh, world. Oh, you were, Adam, you were. But when you yielded to me by eating the forbidden fruit, you yielded to my superiority... You lost dominion of this earth, and I took over. Now you will do as I say. <laughs> Leave this garden at once. You are God's enemy, our enemy. The enemy of God? Yes. You see, God and I had a war in heaven once, Adam. He won that war, but I'll win the next one, the one here on earth. The one that started when you ate the fruit. <laughs> and someday... Someday I shall rule from God's throne, master of the universe. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm God's enemy. <laughs> leave this garden. <laughs> I command you to leave. I command, and you obey. In the name of God, I command you no, to leave. No, no, don't say that. Don't use that name around me. I don't like it. I can't stand it. In the name of God, leave this garden at once. All right. All right, Adam. I'll leave. But I'll be back plenty of time. <laughs> oh, Adam, Adam, I, I'm afraid. We have need to be afraid, Eve. <laughs> but let's always remember, if we call on God, we can overcome the adversary, just as we now overcame him. Look at these flowers, Adam. They're not pretty like they were. They've withered and died. <gasps> well, this, this death happened to us. The penalty of sin is death. Soon after this, Adam and Eve were told that they would have to move from the garden. Move from the garden? But, but we can't move. This is our home. You have sinned. As sinners, you have no right to this perfect paradise home. But I... I don't want to leave. Does the Lord <laughs> still love us, even though we have sinned? The Lord still loves you, and always will. Then why is he making us leave our home? That doesn't sound like love to me. Eve, Eve, <laughs> forgive her for the way she is acting. She is wrought up and sad, doesn't realize what she's saying. All heaven is sad, but there is no other way. You must leave the garden. Will we wither and, and die like the flowers? The wages of sin is death. The moment you sinned, that very moment, you began to die, to grow old. You started on the downhill path to death in the grave. Is there no hope for us? No salvation? Yes, Adam, there is hope. God will someday send his only begotten Son to save you from your sins and redeem the lost world. When will this be? The exact time is unimportant. Until the Savior does come, you and Adam will go outside the garden and start a new home. Invite God to be its ruler, and you will have a happy home. We will do as you say. How is the Savior to come into the world? He will be born as a babe. Will I be his mother? 
I cannot reveal that to you, Eve. Come, Eve. We must go outside the garden and start a new home. A happy, God-fearing home. Yes, Adam. Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, showing rare courage in the face of disaster. In the air. On horseback. Or in a screaming squad car. Ranger Bill, his mind alert, a ready smile, unswerving, loyal to his mission. And all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. So we pray that thou wilt bless us and use us to thy glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Uh, pal, I wonder if I could ask you something. That's kind of a switch, Bill. Usually, I'm the one who wants to ask you something. Well, this is a little personal, Henry, so you don't really have to answer it if you don't want to. Uh, maybe I ought to take a look out back and see how everything is... Oh, that's all right, Stumpy. Anything that Bill wants to talk to me about, well, I don't mind having you here, too. Well, if it's okay. What is it, Bill? Just this, pal. I've been noticing in our devotions here at the station that you've been praying just about the same words each time for quite a while. Now, I'm not questioning your spiritual life, Henry, but I'm hoping that you're aware of what you're saying each time you say it. What do you mean, Bill? I think you know, Henry. You've heard people pray very spiritual-sounding prayers, using all the usual words and expressions, and not mean a thing by their praying. You think I do that? I didn't say that. But it's an easy habit to get into. Sometimes a Christian can slide into a kind of parrot religion and never even know he's done it. Parrot? That's right. He starts repeating himself, or others, or the same words and phrases, and all the time, the meaning is slipping away. I've heard people mention this before, Bill. But I never thought that I might be falling into it. I haven't really said you are, pal. I'm only reminding you to keep a sharp watch on yourself. Empty religious practices are the most deadly hypocrisy that the Christian church can know. That's pretty strong language, Bill. But I guess it really is hypocrisy, isn't it? It sure is, sonny. Why, I've met lots of people in my time who have steered clear of the church just because they saw the emptiness and what was going on. Guess I'd better watch myself. But why would anyone ever pray empty words, Bill? I mean, is there some way a guy like me can look out for things like that? Say, uh, do you remember Al Ferguson, Bill? I was just thinking about him myself. Who's Al Ferguson? He used to live here in Naughty Pine. What's he got to do with what we were talking about? <laughs> Al was a real curious sort of feller. And he usually spoke his mind once he was made up about something. He just about turned the church people in Naughty Pine upside down while he was here. I'd like to hear about that. I think you ought to hear about uh, Al Henry. The whole thing was very much along the same lines as what we were just talking about. Have you got time right now to tell me? <laughs> As long as no one decides to burn down the woods or any other such thing I have. Good. When did Al first start his questioning, Stumpy? You remember? Yeah, like it was yesterday. It was right after a prayer meeting uh, one night. Remember, 
We just left the sanctuary and were on our way back to the station to check the teletype when Al came over. Bill, would you wait up a minute? Oh, uh, sure, Al. Uh, uh, you know Stumpy, don't you? We've never really met, but everyone knows who you are, Stumpy. <laughs> Howdy, Al! Uh, may I talk with you for a minute, Bill? Well, we were just on our way over to the ranger station. Want to walk along? Thanks. I will. Hello, Bill. Stumpy. Nice to see you out tonight. Hello, Mrs. Jackson. Thank you. I was blessed by your prayer, Bill. In fact, I thought the whole meeting was an inspiration and a blessing. I'm glad. Uh, good night, Mrs. Jackson. Good night, gentlemen. See you Saturday at the picnic. Now, what was it that you wanted to see me about, Al? That was perfect. That woman, Mrs. Jackson. Perfect? Uh-huh. Bill, I sat in that prayer meeting and wasn't any more blessed than if I'd been at an auction. All evening, all I heard was words, 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 and many amens to that mass of words. You certainly speak your mind, Al. Whee! I heard you were, uh, well, uh, pretty frank. What's... What's the matter with me, Bill? You know as well as I do that I'm a Christian. No one knows better than I do how deserving of hell I am, or how greatly God has redone my life since I saw forgiveness in the death of Jesus. But why do meetings like tonight leave me so cold? Well, Al, all of us are different. God has seen fit to make us that way. So what satisfies one heart may not satisfy another. But I can't help feeling that those hearts are too easily satisfied. What are you uh, getting at, Al? Well, it seems... Now, I may be completely wrong, but... It seems that many in that meeting were just praying because it was the thing to do. They were saying the same old things I've heard week after week, and amening the same things. It almost seems that just saying anything that sounds religious and calling it a prayer is enough to satisfy them. I don't think you can say for certain what goes on in everyone's mind in there. Oh, I don't think everyone is like that, but I wouldn't have come to you if I'd thought you were in that bunch. Even at that, Al, there are some who were raised to be accustomed only to the, uh, what you call, same old words and phrases. To them, these words really mean something. And they are, I believe, rightly satisfied with them. Even there, Bill. There's something about the way they are said. I agree with you. I can think of a couple of people like that. But this affected pious tone, I just can't believe these people really have any idea of God at all while they're speaking. Well, uh, what do you want Bill to do, young feller? Uh, agree with you? Huh? Oh, I don't know, really. I suppose I did want something of that kind, but what good would that do? Exactly. The trouble with things like this is that they start little groups of people thinking that they're more spiritual than other little groups who are thinking the same thing. Pretty soon you got yourself a nice big split in your church. I see that, Stumpy. And I try not to judge those people, but what can I do? What do you want to do, Al? Oh, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like standing up in that prayer meeting and shout, Stop! Pray what you really mean. Stop playing the same old record every time you bow your heads. But I couldn't do that. Al, let me suggest something to you. Sure, Bill. Now, I believe there's a great deal in what you say. I wouldn't go around calling names, but I know one of the big dangers in the Christian life is to let our striving for real communion with God slip away and to substitute something that only sounds and looks like the real thing. Well, that's exactly what I mean. Al, this Saturday is the church picnic. Are you planning to come? I don't know, Bill. I've told you how I feel, and I just don't know whether I'd really add much to the general festivities. I think you might be able to add quite a bit if you feel strongly enough about it. What do you mean? Just this. People are in a better mood at a shindig, such as a picnic. You can approach them a lot more easily than in more restricted surroundings. Now, why don't you do a little exploring into the area of prayer? Talk to various people about it at the picnic. See what they think, why and how they pray. Possibly you will learn something in the search, and it just might be that others might learn something from your questions. What do you think? Mm. Okay, Bill, I'll try it. 
Between now and then, I'm going to have, a do, have to do a lot of praying myself. I don't want to approach anyone with a completely negative attitude. As long as you see the possibility and really mean to avoid it, I'm sure God can answer that request. I think this might prove to be a very interesting church picnic at that. <laughs> was I fast? Why, when I used to play baseball, I was so fast that when I hit a home run, I used to be the first base before the crowd heard the crack of the bat. And then, while I was rounding second, the second baseman asked me a question, and I shouted the answer to the third baseman in the catcher's ear. <laughs> I hear you were a pretty tough umpire, too. Is that right, Stumpy? Tough? Why, I was so tough that they made me wear one of those wire face masks just to make sure I didn't bite any of the players. <laughs> Looks like we're about ready to serve up the uh, table full of food. <laughs> Come on, everyone. Uh, that's right. Uh, that's good. Hi, Al. Having a good time? Believe it or not, yes. I've had some very good discussions with a few people. Good. Did you learn anything? Uh-huh. So far, I'm getting an increasingly large list of people who really attempt to pray honestly. In fact, Grandma Goodman pretty well puts me to shame. And she uses the old words. Uh, I've um, asked Elder Johnstone to lead us in the blessing. <clears throat> uh, we thank thee, our Father, for the food and fellowship we enjoy this day. We are mindful of those less fortunate than ourselves and commit them to thy care. We pray in the Savior's name. Amen. Thank you so much, Mr. Johnstone. Well, that's perfectly all right, Mrs. Jackson. Always glad to help. Excuse me, Mr. Johnstone. I wonder if I could speak with you a bit. But uh, it couldn't uh, wait until after the meal that these fine ladies have prepared? Well, if no one is sitting here, possibly we could talk during dinner. Well, uh, if you insist. I don't suppose you know me, Mr. Johnstone. Well, that's correct. I don't recall seeing you before. Well, I don't visit the inside of a businessman's office such as yours too often. <laughs> uh, I suspected that. What I've been doing this afternoon is talking with a number of the people here, asking them about prayer. Oh, well, you want me to pray for you? No, it isn't that. You see, I have problems when I listen to others pray. I have problems believing them sincere, and as a result, I can't really pray with them. You believe me insincere when I pray? What I wanted to do was to talk with some of you, to find out what you think and feel, how you prepare yourself for the presence of God. For instance, the prayer you just offered. Well, did you find fault with it? Well, of all the nerve. I haven't said that at all. I'm simply curious, that's all. What did you think when you committed all those less fortunate to the Lord? Well, I, I thought just exactly that. Uh, there are many, even here in Naughty Pine, who do not enjoy the balanced diet and good friends that we enjoy. I was well, simply remembering them. Yes, and personally, I think that's an admirable thing. Many of us just go on never thinking of others. I agree, but what did you mean when you said you committed them? Well, I simply meant that, uh, well, I, I hoped that they would uh, see better days. I, I, I prayed that they would. And don't think that they wouldn't appreciate it if they knew. But why don't they know? I beg your pardon? I, I asked why they didn't know. You're a man of means, Mr. Johnstone. Do you ever visit the poor section of town? Do you ever help any of them out? Oh, my good man, I, I have far too many things to do to be spending my time among them. Well, if I spent my time running around the way you seem to think I should, I'd soon join them in their plight. Really, young man, what do you have in mind with all this? Nothing. It just seems to me that when a man prays for someone else without actually giving of himself... That man is just saying what he says so his conscience can hear an end of it. Well, Young man, never... let me give you a little piece of advice. There's a great deal of difference between what you might call giving of yourself 
and what I would call foolishness. Well, it's, it's enough that I should think of these less fortunate people myself. To go about like some sort of Florence Nightingale or a... A, a Jesus Christ? <laughs> Will you move or must I? You've ruined my lunch. <laughs> Looks like I'm all alone here at the ba Oh, it's you. I don't wonder you're alone. Well, excuse me, please. I've got to get... Mrs. Home. Jackson, wait. Please don't go. Well? I know some of you think I'm just a troublemaker. That's putting it in a more pleasant way than some might. But why? What's that? Why am I regarded as a troublemaker? What have I really done to any of you? Why, that's such a ridiculous question. I hardly feel it deserves an answer. Please, try, will you? Well, look at you. You walk up to such spiritual leaders as Elder Johnstone, and you practically accuse him of hypocrisy, of praying just to ease his conscience. Doesn't he? Oh, you are incorrigible. Oh, give me strength. And what about that? What about what? Every week at prayer meeting, you pray that God will help you to bear your cross as a Christian. And yet often you're angry and superficial. Young man! Isn't it true? You were all set to be very nice to me just now until you discovered who I was. Is that the action of a Christian? And what about you? Going around criticizing, picking, accusing. But I'm not doing any of it with malice, really. A lot of difference that makes. It almost looks as though you think it easier to pray for help in the Christian life than it is simply to make an effort to live it. Oh, I don't have to listen to such things. Don't you see, Mrs. Jackson, that God will never help you to do something that you aren't trying to do in the first place? Oh, you sound to me as though you think you're some kind of a prophet or something. I think rather than spending time talking with the fine Christian people here, you ought to be talking with a psychiatrist. <laughs> That's how it started, Henry. Sounds like Al was finding out just what he suspected all along. Now, don't forget, pal, that he did find some who really were sincere when they prayed in what he called the usual words. It would be a mistake to say it's impossible. Even Al would admit that. But I see what you mean, Bill. If I use words like blessing, inspiration, or joy, or even saved, without really thinking about what they mean... I might just as well be talking nonsense. That's more along the idea, pal. Paul says that he would rather speak a few words that had meaning than many spiritual words that no one understood. <laughs> I remember a couple of expressions that Al used to use as an example of what he meant by all this. What were they? <laughs> he used to say that anyone who really was thinking about what he was saying could never say that he was on fire and all out for the Lord. <laughs> on fire and all out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, what about Al, Bill? When he saw these different people fooling themselves into what they thought was praying, did he do anything about it? He tried a lot of things, Henry. But you know, as well as I do, when you once make someone angry, it's impossible to make a helpful remark to them. They take it as an insult. And cling all the harder to whatever it is you're attacking. Hello, Bill, Stumpy. Well, good morning, Mr. Johnstone. We were just talking about you. Oh? Do I dare ask what it was you were saying? Uh, we were telling Henry about that church picnic a few years back when we all learned a few lessons about prayer. Oh, oh, that. Yes, that was an instructive day, to be sure. I thought that Ferguson fellow was about the most infuriating man I'd ever come across. I probably would never have seen anything in what he said if it hadn't been for the cave-in. Cave-in? We were just getting to that part, Henry. I knew something had to happen. Mr. Johnson isn't really anything like the way you said he was then. <laughs> oh, thank God for that, Henry. Why don't you tell Henry about the cave-in, Mr. Johnstone? All right. That is, if you have time. Oh, frankly, it... It always seems to do me some good to recount the events of that afternoon. As I remember, it was just as some of the men were beginning to choose sides for a game of baseball. I wasn't too interested in joining them, so I decided that a walk would give me the Come on, Al. I need a good second baseman. 
Aren't you going to join the men, Mr. Johnstone? Oh, I'm afraid not. Uh, baseball is a bit too, um, well, energetic for me. Well, I think it's all a pretty silly game anyhow. Dear, you don't think it's going to rain and spoil our nice picnic, do you? Oh, look at the sky. I wouldn't be surprised if we had a shower before the afternoon was over. Oh, I knew we should have held the picnic in the park. Out here, there aren't any pavilions for shelter. Mm. Why? It uh, might be a good idea to get the rest of the food covered and ready to be easily moved. I uh, presume that the idea of having the picnic here included that uh, cave over there in case of bad weather. A cave? Oh, dear, I hadn't even noticed it. Well, I'd better get the ladies busy organizing everything in case we have to move it. There, that's the last of it. Do you think the storm will be a long one, Bill? I doubt it, Mrs. Jackson. If you look a ways, you can actually see the sun shining on the other side of it. I'd say it shouldn't be much longer than 20 minutes to half an hour if the rate is coming. Well, that's a blessing. But that doesn't mean we hadn't all better get inside the cave. When it hits, which won't be long from now, it'll hit hard. Come on, everyone. That's right. Gather up those things over there. That's right. You better get into the cave. You don't go too far back. Just inside a little bit there. That's right. Everybody now, hurry. Right. Well, not a minute too soon. Bill, uh, do you know anything about this cave? <laughs> We've been back into it a ways. Uh, this cave has been explored for quite a ways back, folks, but I wouldn't go uh, back to examine it. Once you get away from the mouth, it gets completely dark. <laughs> I'm afraid it isn't wired with electricity. <laughs> uh, thank you for reminding us of this cave, Mr. Johnstone. I was just wondering... I should have known that the rangers would probably have been through it. Well, it's always a good thing to check. Look out! Get away from the mouth of the cave! Take it! Get back! Get back, everybody! Stumpy, you got a flashlight? Hey, sure! Sonny. Good. So do I. There we are. Is everyone all right? I'm all right. I guess so. Did anybody get caught up there? When we... I suggest a total count. The only way to make sure that no one near the mouth is caught. That's the last seven, Bill. Looks like we're all safe. Safe in this cave with the mouth plugged? Well, I don't call that safe. Neither do I. What are we to do, Bill? I'll try to estimate how thick the cave-in is. That way we'll know whether or not we can expect to dig our way out. And if not, why don't you pray? Are you trying to be funny? Not at all. You seem to think that prayer takes care of things automatically, without any assistance. Why don't you sit back and pray us out of here? Young man, you have made this afternoon very disagreeable for me. With all your talk about prayer and all your accusations, It doesn't I... seem to be too thick. We should be able to dig our way out in a short time. But just go easy on your hands. Oh, yes. Well, let's get started. You see? Why pray when we can dig? My question exactly. I can help if it'll get us out of here more quickly. Aren't you going to pray to be helped in digging? What's that? Oh, it's you. I might have known. When there's work to be done, you're running around trying to start arguments. Well, I'll have none of that now. I'm serious. Don't you feel the need of God's help to dig? I mean, it's it's hard work, and you're not used to such a thing. Well, it has to be done. Our lives depend on it. I haven't got time to worry about how hard it's going to be. That's right. It's the only thing to do, isn't it? Why, yes. So is living a Christian life, isn't it? Well, you step aside, young man. Al! Al Ferguson! Wait a minute! Oh, hi, Bill. Where are you going, Al? Oh, I don't know. I've been going to prayer meetings so long on this night that I don't really know what to do with myself when I don't go. Why aren't you going tonight? After last Saturday's jolly time? Why not? 
All I'd have to do is take one step inside that church and they'd have my head on a platter. Oh, I don't think it's that bad, Al. Come on, I'll go in with you. Police escort? <laughs> Come on, Al, let's go to church. Uh, we're a little late. Uh, we'll sit in the back. Bill, look. Mr. Johnstone is in charge of the meeting. The practice of substituting words for deeds is not new. The Apostle John saw symptoms of it in his day and warned against it when he said, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and truth. James also condemns the vice of words without deed or meaning. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doth it profit? I can tell you personally that it profits not one thing. This past Saturday, I saw my spiritual life in a much clearer light. In the darkness of that cave, the light of God shone in and said, Wallace Johnstone, you're a hypocrite. Well, I'm thankful for the concern of God for my honesty and for his bringing to me a young man with enough gall and scruples to face me with myself. I confess this hypocrisy to you tonight, my friends, and I ask forgiveness for for pretending to be what I wasn't. God's kindness is hard, but he's the God of the truth, and in truth, I praise his name. And that's the whole story, Henry. Well, you were a Christian, weren't you, Mr. Johnson? Yes, Henry, but a pretty useless one. I was happy in my pious show, but I never really did anyone any good. In fact, I, I was a good reason why some laughed at Christianity. They don't laugh at you now. Only because God is who he is and promises what he does for the Christian who keeps his head in the clouds. But, well, the trouble starts if he takes his feet off the ground. Well, Henry... Now you see why what we were talking about a while ago reminded Stumpy and I of Al Ferguson. I sure can. And you can be sure that I'm going to start right away examining what I say in prayer and to others about God. I don't want to fall into the habit of empty words. Good boy. There's nothing empty about God, Henry. He's the fullness of life itself. Any time emptiness is connected with him... It must have started down here with us. Oh, quite true, Stumpy. And uh, speaking of feeling empty, uh, come on down to Sam's. Lunch is on me. See you next week, boys and girls, for more adventure with... Ranger Bell! Thank you.